Hello. This short video is an introduction to the latest NestBlock feature. The idea for massively parallel volunteer computing application came from Dan Garcia from Berkeley, and we are very grateful for it. A regular NestBlock application has a room with a set of static roles. The room is the virtual network, and the roles are the nodes participating in the given application. For example, in a tic-tac-toe game, there are two roles, player X and player O, and two computers can play those roles, participate in this room, in this game of tic-tac-toe. And so far, uh, this room and, and role feature has been static and set at design time. The new feature we are demonstrating today allows applications to connect to each other dynamically at runtime. An application can request a public role ID from the server by calling an RPC. Anybody who knows this role ID afterwards can send messages to that given application. This can be used, for example, to set up a volunteer computing application. This particular demo we are showing today uh, uses a prime factorization to illustrate the concept. The master application awaits workers to join and then sends them subtasks. In this case, the subtask is to test one possible factor and send back the exponent. The master doesn't do any computation itself. It basically distributes the task to workers, collects the results, combines them, and finally displays the, uh, the end result. So let's check this out. All right, so here is the master application. And of course, this is the more complicated one. As you will see, the worker one is simpler. Let's briefly go through the different parts. So for example, when the green flag is clicked, we request a new public role ID from the server. Here it is. And then we'll basically display this and then wait for workers to connect. And we set this list of workers to the empty list to start with. Okay. Here, when we receive a connect message with a worker ID, we simply add that worker ID to the list of workers. Workers can, of course, disconnect as well. They can send a disconnect message, and then we'll find that particular worker in the list, remove it, and so on. All right, so once we have workers, we can actually start the computation. So the, when the uh, space key is pressed, that is when we'll ask the user for an integer, uh, we'll check that it is OK, and then finally uh, initialize a bunch of uh, variables, for example, m, is an important one, m is going to store the product of the factors uh, found so far, and we'll keep the result in this factors list, uh, we always have a current factor to test, and we start at 2, finally we'll keep track of the number of requests sent and the number of results received, and then finally when we uh, send all the requests, we'll set this request all uh, to true at the end, we also keep track of time, how long it takes to compute something. If we scroll further down, uh, we reset the timer, and, and as you'll see later, we also have a watchdog, uh, meaning that uh, we are watching for workers, for example, not returning a result, and then we catch that error, uh, as you'll see. So finally, after all this initialization, this is where we actually do the uh, distribution of the tasks. So we have this repeat until loop, uh, the fact variable keeps track of the currently uh, active factor that we check, and then we'll need to basically increase that all the way to the square root of n over m. Remember, n uh, keeps collecting the factors found so far. Here, the first thing we do is we wait until at least one worker is available for computation. So usually most workers are busy doing the computation, and once they return a result, we add it back to the list, and that's when the new one will become available, and we can uh, send a new request. And this is what we do here. We send this factor message to the uh, worker, uh, which is the head of the worker list, with the n, the value we are, I mean, the, the number we are factorizing, and also the current uh, factor candidate. Okay, and then we remove that worker from the list, increase the number of requests. Here is where we keep track of uh, the factors. So we start at 2, and then we go through all the odd numbers. You might ask, why don't we only check prime numbers? And the reason is that actually finding all the prime numbers that, is, that are smaller than the square root of n is the most time-consuming part of all. So instead, we simply check all uh, uh, odd numbers 
and uh, the workers figure out whether that is actually a prime or not, as you'll see later. Anyway, so once we are through with this loop, we set this request all variable to true. Basically, we sent all the requests. All right, so what happens when a worker returns a result? Here is the result message. We get back the factor, the exponent found, also the worker ID, and also optionally workers can say that, okay, we had enough, we don't want to contribute anymore, so they can send back this quit uh, uh, variable. So if we are uh, not quitting, if the worker is not quitting, we add this worker ID back to the workers list, we change the number of results received by one, and if that exponent is greater than zero, that is, it is a factor, then we'll add uh, that factor as many times as necessary to the factor list, update the value of m. Finally, we check whether we are done or not. So if m is already n, we are done. Okay? We don't need to wait for all the other results coming in and whatnot. Uh, if it is not the same, but we already requested everything and the current number of results uh, received and the number of requests sent are the same, me meaning that we have everything that we need, then and we are not done yet, then we send this done message uh, to ourselves. And the reason we need to do this because multiple res result may come in, and so this script may run multiple times and keep sending the done uh, broadcast message. So we make sure that we only do that once. All right. So what happens when we are done? Okay. So when we are done, if the factors list is empty, we have a prime number. Otherwise, if m is not equals n, there is one more large prime number in the factors list, which will be exactly n over m. So we add that. And then we basically build up the result. Basically, we list all the factors uh, as many times as necessary here, and then uh, play a nice sound and uh, display the end result. That's it. And we can wait for another uh, integer to test. Now here is this watchdog. So we could actually keep track of which worker received which request and which uh, request wasn't returned. That would make uh, the worker a little bit more complicated. So instead, we simply uh, basically check for a timeout and receiving a, a message. So in, a for in this forever loop, every second we check whether we sent all the requests out or not. If not, we'll keep going. If all the requests were sent out, then we wait three seconds. If we didn't receive all the results, that means that one of the workers is probably dead or disconnected or the network went down. So we say there is a possible network error. We disconnect all the workers and broadcast the done message if necessary. Most of the time the result will still be uh, correct because most requests will return with a factor of zero that is not a factor. Nevertheless, we'll have this error message displayed. All right, so that's very briefly the, the, the worker code, uh, I mean the master code. Let's look at the, the worker code itself. Here it is, it's much simpler. First of all, when this one is started, we request a public role ID ourselves. The master will need this to send us messages. Okay? And then we wait for uh, the user to type in the master ID, and then we send this connect message back to the master. Okay. We can disconnect by pressing the X key when we are not uh, requesting, I mean, not processing uh, requests. And then here is the handler for the factor message. Okay. So first of all, in this user block, we check whether the given number is a factor or not. Okay. If it is a factor, then we check whether it's a prime or not. Again, the logical order would be the opposite except it's much faster to check whether a number is a factor or not than whether th that factor is a prime or not. So we only do the prime checking, which is actually here. We only do that if that given number is actually a factor. Uh, if it is not a prime number, the result should be zero. Otherwise, the result would be already computed here. And then we'll send that message back uh, to the master. And if the key spa space key is pressed, that's the quit variable, so we can actually quit after sending back a result by pressing the space key. So that kind of still sends back the last result, but it won't accept new requests. All right. So let's actually 
promise. Okay, so let's start the master. The master provided this user ID 96754. Okay, so let me have a couple of workers. It's already on this machine in a different browser tab. So let's, they're already waiting for an input. So 967754. Okay, and you can see that one worker connected to the master. Let's do this one again. 96754. Okay. Here is the second worker. And I also have another machine connected with remote desktop. So we can also do this. Okay. There it is. All right, so you can see that we have six workers and we are waiting for uh, an integer. So I'm gonna press the space bar and let me type in a fairly large number and see what happens. Here are the four workers on that remote machine and let's see our local browser tabs All right they are computing as well so let's see what the prime factors of this number are okay we can see it already found 19 you can see how many requests it sends and how many results it received and we are actually done so 19 and 52,631 you can see that we have all the all six workers listed once we are done with the computation. All right, well, let's see. How about a prime number? I believe this is a prime number. And here are again all the workers. Okay, let's try to disconnect this guy. So by hitting the space bar, it should stop and indeed it stopped so it's not getting any new updates but i can reconnect let's see 96754 and it joins the computation again and okay, so well, another thing we can do we can actually add new workers specify the master ID again, 9, 6, 7, 5, 4, and now we have an extra guy helping us out. Alright, so this will need to go all the way to 1000, uh, since it, it's a prime number and that's uh, the square root of approximately this number, 1 million. So another thing we can do, we can actually disconnect one worker while it's, being, uh, while it's computing something, and so it will never send back the result. Okay. And that's where our watchdog will uh, come into the picture uh, and you'll see that it will hopefully catch the error and uh, provide us with an error message. So getting close to a thousand, you can see that every once in a while one worker pops up. It basically depends on the refresh rate of the screen and how the workers come back and go. Uh, <coughs> but all six are working hard still. All right, we are getting close. All right, possible network error results may be incorrect. Workers need to reconnect, so basically we have three. Okay, it is indeed a prime number. Whatever we lost wasn't a factor anyway, so it, this is still true. We can be sure that it's correct, but in this case it is, and you can see that the number of requests were 500. The number of results received 499. And again, uh, we will update the master to actually handle this situation more gracefully, but right now it's just an illustration that we can catch these uh, error conditions. All right, so that was our demo. Uh, let me show you uh, where you can play with this so you can actually go to these URLs and uh, try this out for yourself.
Thank you.